Hello, Malaysia. I am Matt Goss. I'm one of the lead game designers here on World of Warcraft. And I'm Patrick Dawson, the technical director for World of Warcraft. We're looking forward to bringing you an excellent expansion with Battle for Azeroth on August 14th. So the two screenshots are actually kind of the, we, we refer to as the instigate, instigating a, uh, event that happens in Battle for Azeroth. So we have, you know, the World Tree burning, we also have the Battle for Lordaeron. These are two events that happen uh, before the expansion starts, but in a, uh, uh, they're something that players will play through a little bit uh, ahead of time. So you'll get context of what happens there. It will be just like when we get to the story in the game that will, that will be, be answered. Okay. Right now, I think there's the the those think those events have happened, and so depending okay. on whether your alliance or horde, you might have a different interpretation of which way the it plays out. Yeah, I can't. Okay. Yeah, it'll be something to discover okay. in, as we play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, there is basis to that rumor. Uh, we are. Uh, I think Ian actually announced it in one of his Q and A sessions a few weeks ago. Uh, so we're going to a world in, in Battle for Azeroth where all loot is personal. Uh, we're going to keep the same systems that we had in place for Legion for personal loot. You know, we've done a lot of work on those over over the expansions of you know adding a better display so you can see what other people get, uh, and also loot tradeability. So if you have a, a piece of armor that's equal to this to in, in a specific slot, so let's say you get a breastplate, you get a uh, better breastplate. That new breastplate, if it's a higher item level than one you've seen before. That will be bound to you. Uh, if you get one that's equal level or lower, then you can trade that to other players. Uh, we, we made that change. It's not it's it's not really a uh, specifically targeted at split rating for making that change. It's a uh, we're really looking at it more as personally as a better experience for uh, for our players. Like if you're participating in the content, I want you to feel like you're rewarded. I think it's you know, like as guild leaders that we are. Like I think that's a the thing that we, we like is having people feel like they come for a reason and, and have something to look forward to. Um, this ha Having it impact split rating, I think, for players trying to find the best way to get an advantage. I think we learned a lot of lessons from both Legion and Warlords and Draenor and how we did flying and what we liked and didn't like about that. Um, I think we do agree that when something first launches, the best way to experience that content is through uh, traveling on a normal mount, not a flying mount. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a possibility we'll enable flying in the future. Uh, I, I do think we've done in the past, and we've certainly done that. Yeah, I, we, we've actually taken, so we've, we've kind of done a, a, Legion, we did a big pass on classes, and we did a lot of uh, work on those. Uh, for Battle for Azeroth, we're taking a little bit more of a, a targeted approach to things. So we had uh, two specs that, um, Really got a, quite a bit of, of TLC in this uh, in this expansion, uh, which is uh, Survival Hunter and Demonology Warlock. Uh, those are both playable uh, on our alpha as well. Um, we're still like kind of in that feedback stage, I'd say, where we're getting uh, we're still you know collecting feedback and iterating on it. Uh, but those two classes have uh, pretty pretty major changes to their rotation and the way that they 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 play out. Um, we're always looking like. Um, I think almost every spec in every class has a couple talents that have shifted, have a couple, you know, a couple things that have changed. But for the majority, like the the, the two biggest changes will be in those two specs. No, no, Three. I think you're misinterpreting. Uh, it's it's not that we're buffing a class spec. It's more that um, there are, are are buffs that you add in the game. It's like auras on your character. Um, buffs they, for all classes. No, no, they, items. no. It's uh, sorry. It's like a spell. It's a specific spell that you cast that's called like Arcane Intellect or Power Word Fortitude. And what those spells do is they up your stamina by um, a couple hundred or they up your intellect by a couple hundred. They existed before Legion mm -hmm. and we took them out for Legion and those are coming back now. So like if you're a, if you're a mage, you can cast the spell and you can make your group better. Is it just for mages? It's uh, mages, priests, I think, are the two that we added back. So it's... Uh, uh, can work more than I don't think no? so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I think... The, uh, the only thing I can really share is it's you know we're going to Zandalar you know Zandalari troll home and since it's, it's a little bit of a troll themed expansion if you're playing Horde it would be really hard for us to get away with not having Vol'jin as part of it so he has he has a storyline don't have much more to share at this time but there there is a uh, he will make an appearance and he'll be he'll be part of the expansion. Hmm. Uh, maybe gladiators like, I mean, ladder play. I could say that we don't, we, 
with every class I respect, we really do try to make sure that everybody has their their they they should be able to participate in any kind of content. So we we really try to make changes to to make that uh, uh, to make that true. Sometimes it's it can be difficult with the class mechanics and what the current meta is because it's a lot of times it's driven by the player's perception, not necessarily what is you know what is uh, balanced in the game. Uh, but we it's not intentional for us to leave any spec out or any class out when we do that. Uh, we, that's something we're looking at. I, 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 we'd like to. We look at it as a system that we can add more places to in the future. Uh, we don't have anything more to, to share at this time on, on how many we'll have or what, what, which ones we'll have. Uh, I think some of it depends on the story of what we tell, too. Like, what locations make sense from a story side to bring into that. I, mean, I think the, the three-person cap was just about trying to make it feel like an exploration. And I think there's a there's a number, when it goes up, if it's higher than that, I think it starts to it starts to feel like you have less control over what you're seeing and what you're, what you're going to. Um, I don't think we're really locked into three forever. Like I think there's there's a world where bigger islands might require bigger expeditions, which would be cool. Uh, but for right now, like we're, we're, we're seeing this three and how it plays out over the, over the, uh, over the islands that we have now. It was also really important for us to have it be role agnostic, and I think as you add more players to it, roles become more important. Right? We didn't want to force you to have to have a tank or force you to have to have a healer. Um, this way, it kind of keeps it smaller, so you can focus on the exploration aspect of it. Some of that's to be determined. We we don't we haven't gone through the entire reward structure yet and, and figured all that out. Uh, but I, I will say that we 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 don't look at war mode as. Uh, having a vector of exclusive rewards that you can only get through war mode we prefer that those rewards were because we want it to feel optional if it, it felt like i really want like i know you if we put a mount in war mode you would feel like you were obligated to, to do that because you have to have that mount i would do war mode anyway <laughs> you would do war mode anyway. <laughs> yeah. and we want to make sure that players still have that choice so it would be any reward that we give you it's more about efficiency in that mode so that you make up for for the fact that you're getting uh, pvp uh, content the whole time, uh, but it, it should be able to get it. You know whether it's you know through WorldQuest or whether it's from, from another system, that they'll, they'll be available other places. I think this is one of those like you're gonna have to play through the quest line because you know, <laughs> uh, it's it's gonna be hard to explain. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool story. I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> what we what we talked about at, at BlizzCon was actually she's gonna make an appearance. and Shari is going to be. As part of the expansion, uh, I think that's going to be a, a. I think when we look at the storyline of Alf Razeroth, you know, we have these two strong factions that are going to war, and the third one shows up. I think what what we're excited about, or we're, you know, the the storyline of what happens then. Like we've seen Alliance and Horde team up before. That's been a thing that we've done against you know greater evils. I mean, this is war, this is the biggest war we've had in World of Warcraft, so I think it's we'll have to see what happens. I think we're always looking for efficiencies in ways we can improve, improve our user interface. Um, and we do look at quality of life changes we can make. Uh, we do think it's important to keep the quest log to have a fixed size, because if you open it up to have hundreds of quests, that becomes unmanageable too. We really want you to focus on what you know a core set of quests are, rather than have you get too dis disorganized with uh... I can add to one one thing we're trying to do is try to make sure you're not getting quests that you don't want to do. I think we had a we had a little bit of a, a over overdone in Legion where you would just get a quest that you would hold on to for a long period of time and then it would just take up a, a quest slot for that that period of time. But you didn't want to get rid of it. So we're gonna try to minimize that going forward in, in battle for Azra. Minimize that types of quests. Yeah, we have a we, we're this is all still in development, so we're, we're working through them. Um, one of the things we have talked about, I think Ian used the example in the uh, in the event this morning about a, a supply drop. Like there's something something happens that is you know a, a, an event happens where something comes out and, and spawns in, and then both sides are compelled to go and, and fight over it, and whoever gets it gets some some bonus. Um, specifics on that, like a little bit of TBD and a little bit of feedback and, and play testing. We need to figure out, you know, how often they show up, what they look like, what the rewards are, and those things are, are still being worked out. Um, I, I think we're this is one of those things that should be on alpha and, and around the corner sometime. 
play forward. I, again, a lot of it depends on rewards. Like if it feels like a a reward that if I'm in the zone and the supply drop happens and I want to run over and do it, then I think I, I think that has a different uh, cadence than it does if it's like say rewards such as uh, you know uh, rare mounts in the game that we've had in the past. So uh, we're sticking with that that first reward mechanism, you know. Uh, for for these uh, for these events, but we look at war mode as a as a platform for events. Like we're going to add more and more things to them over time. So uh, who knows in the future? <laughs> like what scale? I think we're, we're going to start we're going to start rather small, and I think we can we can something we can build on in the future. 想要即时获取免费游戏的消息，只要在专业的 following 里选择 Cephas， 并订阅我们的 YouTube 频道，打开铃铛。你就不会错过任何最新资讯啦。